Hello dear viewers, before starting my presentation for today, let me answer my last question that is about the TAD, why it should not get contaminated. Number one, it will cause an overestimate as it will be exposing, getting exposed even when the wearer is not wearing it. And number two is if it is a radioactivity which is going to live long, then next time when he will wear it, that will be an unnecessary exposure. So this is the answer. Now today's topic is cropped out of the question that I have asked you that is contamination. Contamination in nuclear medicine. It is an unwanted radioactive source which gets adhered to the surface. Now which are these surfaces? According to that I have classified them into three types. That is the workplace, the patient and the radiation worker on the surface of these three. On the basis of this, let me tell you the causes, adverse effect, prevention and management in general of these contaminations. The workplace gets contaminated because of accidental spillage. It can be major or minor, a small amount of activity or more depending on its gravity, it is, this is divided, but this is a cause of workplace getting contaminated. The broken containers, the leaky containers like syringes which you are going to withdraw the radioactivity into, if they are not tightly fixed with the uh, needle and the such a possibility of workplace contamination can be causing the contamination in the workplace. The careless handling of the uh, radioactive source is also a very important cause of contamination of the workplace. As for the patients, the excretory fluids like urine and vomit and the blood which is a secretion uh, which can come out of the patient's body when it is radioactive that can be a cause of contamination and the dose while administration if it falls on the surface instead of going inside the right root can also cause the patient's contamination body surface contamination as for the radiation worker again the careless handling can cause the radiation worker also to get contaminated in the sense he will not only contaminate the workplace but also make it uh, stuck to his body surface and this also is a cause of contamination for radiation worker untrained even if it is uh, he is careful just because of his underconfidence he may shiver and that is the possibility of untrained contamination uh, radiation worker getting contaminated and now for the patient handling in the sense such patients who are already administered with radioactivity and if he has to handle this kind of uh, patients who are vulnerable or possibly they may vomit or they may uh, without the urine control if there is um, contamination on the patient's body that may get transferred to the radiation worker when he's handling such patients. Now the adverse effects. If the workplace gets contaminated then the safety of that area is reduced to a large extent, extent and the spreading of the poss possibility is also there if it is not managed or not contained. Spreading in the sense the other person may uh, the worker who is not knowing about this kind of workplace contaminated can uh, pass on inadvertently, inadvertently and take away that radioactive contamination on himself and carry it to another workplace too and if he goes to another contact of another radiation worker he can also spread. This is how the spreading is possible. This is the adverse effect. As for the patient's uh, radioactive contamination you already are aware of the diagnostic and therapeutic applications. The diagnostic in the sense the hot artifacts or radioactive unnecessary surfaced uh, concentrations can cause the masking of the region of interest and spoil the image quality making it, it sometimes non-interpretable. And then therapeutic in the sense the oral 
a radioactivity administration of therapeutic value can get may get vomited out and the benefit risk ratio becomes very very less because what is the radioactivity for if it is uh, what we are going to use it for the effective treatment has got lost or the benefit has lost. Now for the radiation worker, the, if this goes against Anara, he is going to unnecessarily get exposed because of this kind of contamination. So he has to avoid this contamination for safe working. Now spreading possibility, as I said, that the person who has not actually not aware of the radioactivity uh, falling on the workplace uh, may also take it away and that person can become a source now and passing it on to any other workers or even the other workers and he himself may fall into the possibility of internal exp exposure and this is with the surface on contamination gets percolated and uh, through the skin and that can cause the internal exposure and if not washed the hands are not washed and he directly ingests something then the contamination can go inside his body too so all these are the adverse effects of these three types of contamination as for the prevention you can understand the counteraction of all these causes can be the preventive methods this is the radioactive the workplace where you have to handle radioactivity you should always be covered with absorbent sheets and after your work is over remove the absorbent sheets so that any possible contamination is out of the place and inspecting the containers in the syringes or the needles or whatever you are going to use should be checked out for the whether they are leaky or anything like that so the if the needle should tightly fit the syringe and the broken vials the glass vials if they are having any cracks they should not be used to uh, handle radioactivity or any kind of such radioactive procedure should not be done with broken containers and definitely careful handling however simple the procedure is the careful nature or careful attitude is what going to save you from the radiation uh, contamination as for the patients, the anti-vomiting tablets can avoid this vomit uh, of the patient and who can otherwise contaminate himself and also the uh, people around the workplace and the radiation worker. And before that, the best possible way to make the patient cooperative and maybe reducing his chances of vomiting also can be by relaxation and that is by counseling him before the dose administration and making him very much ready for the acceptance of the radioactive procedure. Most of the times this vomiting is due to the extra uh, anxiety that the patient builds up before he really starts to get into the procedure which he does not know very well about. The next point is about the diapers that has to be used to contain the radioactive urine of the pediatric patients or the patients, adult patients who have, uh, do not have the control over their urine. The spillage of dose should be avoided in the sense the uh, dose when it is being administered through the intracath or uh, directly administered also the needle should be checked for getting tightly fit and if it is through the intracath then there should, it should be opened uh, properly and the radioactivity should go completely inside and the cord should be tightly closed once it has been finished and with the three veins should be closed along with this cork too and all these are the reasons possibility that uh, the blood can come out again reflux and or radioactive dose itself can also come out and stick on the patient's body all these things can be avoided if um, the scork has been tightly fixed so such things have to be taken care of as for the radiation worker first see to it that the training is complete the supervisors or the seniors who are considered to be um, taking care of their uh, uh, team especially the training part of the team had to be careful about giving them a chance of dummy practice 
that is the radioactivity should be replaced by the non-radioactive material and dry run or a dummy run of the same procedure using non-radioactive and uh, material and so that can make the trainee very ready or he can get a lot of practice and if at all there is a spillage that will be for the non-radioactive one and come to know where he goes wrong and then correct himself over it. The counselling, second point is about the counselling the patient as I have already told you which will help himself also to be uh, saving from the possible uh, vomiting or when he has to handle the patient once administered there with radioactivity then the chances of his uh, facing this possibility of contamination will be avoided. Even though after the radioactive dose administration when the patient has to be handled it is always safe to have a personal protective equipment on yourself the lab coats or the covers on that the gloves and everything such material such protective equipment can protect the radiation breaker from the patient's body fluids if at all after all the precautions still the patient has to go through such kind of uh, contamination possibilities which can get transferred to the radiation worker too. so personal protective equipment is like a shield for the radiation worker now that i have talked about these first three aspects let me tell you about the management which in general the most important role is played by the radiation safety officer. In this case, remember that you one should never panic or understand that this is not a crime, it is a mistake which has happened or it is an unnecessary or unwanted thing. Nobody is going to sue you there and so you should not be afraid of anything and not to hide. You have to pass it on to the real concerned senior out there and that is the radiation safety officer. Don't panic because it is going to only increase the problem of contamination and your hands getting shivered and you may increase the contamination, you may increase the spillage or there is a if you hide it, the possibility of spread can also be there because you have not passed it on to the whole team they will he or she the, your teammates will start spreading the contamination without even your knowledge or without having told them so these two things are very important however simple they look like but it is an important message that i'm conveying to you the containment of the contamination for whatever is there like suppose there is a spillage that immediately absorbent sheets are going to help and these are available in the decontamination kit which uh, along with a team of uh, very well trained staff housekeeping staff will be there along with the radiation safety officers supervision they will clean the place this place before and after cleaning the radiation safety officer has to check the contamination and survey the area for its safety and this is very important that the radiation safety officer has to check that before the radiation and decontamination is done in the sense if the radioactivity is very long lived then it is and it is a major spillage it is always safe to avoid that decontamination also until uh, it decays to the safe levels for the safety of the team who is going to decontaminate this area. The, because see once the major spillage has occurred the whole activity is lost there is no work to be done in that area. So it's always it is of no use being in that area and cleaning it because after that there is no immediate need of that work. It is always better to close that workplace until the radioactivity becomes used manageable, manageably less and uh, the people are uh, who are going to really manage it will also not get too much exposed. Now I am going to leave you with the question like what is the reference on which the radiation safety officer will consider that area as safe that is 
how can he uh, determine that now this place is safe or this radiation marker is free from contamination or the patient is also free, uh, clean enough to get the scan done. I am waiting for your feedback and questions. Thank you.